I just finished this recent project. It's a John Deere Gator with some little added functionality. There's some interesting things happening under the hood, literally. So let's check it out. I'll show you exactly what happened and, and how you can implement it in your own projects. Let's get started. The front portion of the installation is pretty straightforward. The nice thing is you can't really even tell that it's there. This is the wiring running to the LEDs in the front, the blue TR3s from Whelan in the front. I made the connections the standard way I made before with the Jeep project. I got a crimp and I got some heat shrink tubing. That's keeping it safe, it's keeping it contained, and it's, it's, it's just a really great electrical connection. I've also included the connection to the sink wire. So these two lights are actually synced together, which is perfect. It looks a lot better than two lights kind of off sync. It's gross, you don't want that. If you look at it, these wires are wired in parallel, but I'm actually only util utilizing one wire going all the way down the line. It saves on wire costs. I don't have to run two individual wires through the whole, mach whole machine. I can actually just run it from place to place. And it saves some costs there. That's pretty much it for the front. I'm gonna show you the, the switches and then the electrical box in the mid area and then I'll show you the rest of the install. A couple of these switches were here before. These guys are new, they're weatherproof, which is perfect. You can get them on DigiKey, they're awesome. So far they've worked out pretty well. This one's actually not even being used, but we don't, I don't have a panel cover for it anymore. Unfortunately, those were all drilled out and used. So straightforward. All the power for each of the circuits, so the light circuit, the spotlight circuit and the emergency light circuit are all going through these switches. There are no secondary relays. It's all handled by these switches. These switches can handle more than enough current for this type of application. It's perfect. Moving on to the electrical box. Let's take a sneak peek inside this box. It's an IP rated box. It's actually a NEMA 4 box, if I remember. All the important stuff is happening in here. Plus, all the connectors and this vent here are all IP rated as well. So that, what does that mean? It's waterproof, it's weatherproof. All the connections inside here are protected away from anything, water, dirt, whatever. It's a great box. Minimal changes were required to add these holes here. The only thing I probably would change moving forward, I would actually thread these, these holes to fit these particular uh, wire holders. That way it's an easy installation. The, the nuts that are used for these off the shelf are just too large to fit in this type of box. And this box is just perfectly sized. I really don't want to go any bigger than that. Let's go and look inside. Looking inside, there's a Euro style terminal block. All the connections are made with ferrules, so everything is crimped at the end. Really solid electrical connections. There is a single power line coming in from the battery, so it's coming in from down here looping up and around and in. So this is where the power comes in. That power gets distributed to the switches that you guys just saw. Those switches power the spotlights and the emergency lights that run up the back and over this, this roll protector, which I will show you in about a second. I will say one thing is that this little fuse holder is very handy. It actually allows you to tie into this particular fuse block, continue protecting the original circuit there, but also tap off of it. Considering it is a higher current, likely the, the starter motor, it can handle more than enough current to supply the lights. Lights are SIP current compared to a starter motor. Perfect for our purposes. And most importantly, it protects everything. You need to have fuses to protect your circuitry. No matter how perfectly you do it, you never know when something gets pinched and it could cause fire if you're not careful. So fuses, important. Finally, we come to the most important part here. We have the lights. They're mounted to the stainless steel tubing here. The hardest part was actually drilling some holes in here and also getting those holes tapped for the screws that we wanted to end up using. In this case, we ended up using a drill bit tap combination tool. So I stuck that into the impact gun and using some just home mineral oil, I was able to machine out the holes for these screws we ended up breaking two, mostly just because if you're not careful and you're at, a dip, at an opposite angle, that tap will snap and it's gonna get stuck in there and it's not coming out. The most interesting part about this install is all the wiring is inside, for, for the most part, except for this part. 
Just like the front, all the sync wires on these guys are connected. Plus, again, everything is run in parallel. The only problem was right at the mid junk at the junction, at the junction here, there is a like there is a piece of metal that is blocking anything from going to the other side where the other light is. So we did have to run a second uh, set of wires down through the other side and, and up onto the that, that driver side. You can check out more details about this project on circuitdojo.org forward slash John Deere Gator project. You can check out the tools, bill of materials, and schematic, all there available for you to take a look at. A lot of the techniques used here, I've already done, and I've already showed you how to do in the Jeep project. So you check out the Jeep project, especially the crimping, the, anything to do with the ferrules, you will find that on circuitdojo.org and you search for the Jeep project, it's right there. I hope you found this project useful, especially in your projects that you are working on. Let me know what you're working on, by the way. Send me an email, it's jared at circuitdojo.org. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.